Good morning. Welcome back to our Bible study and Bible reading. Uh, we're going chronologically from Genesis to Revelation this year, and you found us in Joshua 22. I want to encourage you, if you don't have a copy of God's Word, that you grab it, get you a notepad and a journal or a piece of paper and take some notes as we go along. I always like to have my highlighter and my pen handy when I'm reading the Bible, so maybe you can get a chance to do that. Uh, today, again, we're in Joshua chapter 22, so let's read 22, 23, and 24 together. The Bible says, Then Joshua set, called the Reubenites and Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You've kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. You've obeyed my voice and all that I commanded you. You have not left your brethren these many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment by, of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given you rest from your, to your brethren, and he has promised them. Now therefore return and go to your tents and to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take careful heed to the commandment and to the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away and they went to their tents. Now the half tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given possession in Bashan, but the other half of it, Joshua, gave a possession among the brethren on this side of the Jordan, westward. And indeed, when Joshua sent them away of their intents, he blessed them and spoke to them, saying, Return with much riches with your, to your tents, with your very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. The children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh returned, and departed from the children of Israel at Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the country of Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they had obtained according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And when they came to the region of the Jordan, which is the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an altar there in the Jordan, a great impressive altar. Now the children of Israel heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an altar, altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan, in the region of Jordan, on the, ch on the children of Israel's side. And when the children of Israel heard of it, uh, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered together at Shiloh to go to war against them. And then the children of Israel sent Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh, into the land of Gilead, and with him ten rulers, one ruler from each of the chief house of every tribe in Israel, and each one was the head of the house of his father among the divisions of Israel. They, then they came up to the children of Reuben, to the children of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, to the land of Gilead, and they spoke with them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, What treachery is it that you've committed against the God of Israel, to turn away this day and following the Lord, and that you've built for yourselves an altar, that you might rebel this day against the Lord? It's the inquiry of Peor, not enough for us, from which we are not cleansed till this day, although... There was a plague in the congregation of the Lord, but that you must turn away this day from following the Lord, and it shall be from you to rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he'll be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. Nevertheless, if the land of your possession is unclean, then cross over to the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and take position among us. But do not rebel against the Lord, nor rebel against us by building yourselves an altar besides the altar of the Lord our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing? Wrath fell on the congregation of Israel, and that man didn't perish alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and said to the heads of the divisions of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord God of gods, he knows. And let Israel itself know, if it is in rebellion or in treachery against the Lord, do not save us this day. If we've built ourselves an altar to turn from following the Lord or to offer burnt offerings or grain offerings or peace offerings on it, let the Lord himself require an account. But if, in fact, we have not done it for fear, for a reason, saying in time to come to your descendants may speak to our descendants, saying, what have you to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord has made the Jordan a border between you and us. You children of Reuben and children of Gad, you have no part in the Lord. So your descendants will not make our descendants cease fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, let us now prepare and build ourselves an altar, not for burnt offering or for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between you and us and our generations after us, that we may perform the service of the Lord before him 
and our own burnt offerings with sacrifices and our peace offerings, that your, de your descendants may not say to our descendants in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Therefore, we said that it will be when we, they say this to our generations in time to come, that we may say, here is a replica of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made, though not for burnt offerings nor sacrifices, but it's a witness between you and us. Far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord and turn from following the Lord this day to build an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices, besides the altar of the Lord our God, which is before his tabernacle. Now when Phinehas the priest and the rulers of the synagogue, the heads of the divisions of Israel who were with him, heard the words that the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the half-tribe, the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them. Then Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said to the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and the children of Manasseh, This day we perceive the Lord is among us, because you have not committed this treachery against the Lord. And now you've delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. Uh, and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the rulers, returned from the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, from the land of Gilead to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought back word to them. So the thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God. They spoke no more of going against them in battle to destroy the land where the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar witness, for it is a witness between us that the Lord is God. Now it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua was old, advanced in age. And Joshua called for the, all of Israel, for their elders, for their heads, for their judges, for their officers, and said to them, I'm old, advanced in age. You've seen all the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he who fought for you. See, I've divided to you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from the Jordan with all the nations that I've cut off as far as the great sea westward. And the Lord your God will expel from them, them before you, drive them out of your sight. So you shall possess their land as the Lord your God promised you. Therefore, be very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, lest you turn aside from it to the right hand or the left, and lest you go among these nations, these who remain among you. You shall not make mention of uh, these nations, uh, make, make, make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them, nor bow down to them, but you shall hold fast the Lord your God as you have done to this day. For the Lord has driven out from before you a great and strong nations. But as for you, no one has been able to stand against you to this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God is he who fights for you and as he promised. Therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God, or else if indeed you go back and cling to the remnant of these nations, these that remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go into them, and they into you. Know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations from before you, but they shall be a snares and traps to you, and scourges on your sides and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this good land which the Lord God has given you. Behold this day, I'm going the way of the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed in all the good things the Lord has promised spoke concerning you. All have come to pass to you, uh, not one word of them has failed. Therefore it shall come to pass that as the good things have come up upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so the Lord will bring upon you all the harmful things until he has destroyed you from this good land, which the Lord your God has given you. When you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods and bowed down to them, then the anger of the Lord will burn against you and you shall perish quickly from the good land which he's given you. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of the Israel, for their heads, for the judges, and for their officers. And they presented themselves before the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, For your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, but they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants, and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess. But Jacob and, the children of, uh, and his children went out to Egypt. Also I sent Moses and Aaron. I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. Afterward, I brought you out. 
Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. So they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them, covered them, and your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Then you dwelt in the wilderness a long time, and I brought you out to the land of the Amorites, who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand, that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose to make war against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam, therefore he continued to bless you. So I delivered you out of his hand. Then you went over to the Jordan and came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Girgashites, the, the, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I delivered them into your hand. I set the hornet before you to drive them out from before you. Also the two kings, the Amorites, but not with your sword or with your bow. I have given you a land which you did not labor, cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you didn't plant. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in which you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us all the way we went and along all the people with whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He's a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. And the people of Joshua said, no, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, you're, you're witnesses against yourselves. You've chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Now, therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you, incline your heart to the Lord, God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord, our God, we will serve and his voice will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made for them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Then Joshua wrote the words of the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there on an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness for us, to us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which is spoken to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, each to his own inheritance. Now it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. And they buried him with the border of his inheritance at Temnasera, uh, which is in the mountains of Ephraim, on the north side of Mount Gaash. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had known all the works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. The bones of Joseph which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt and buried in Shechem in the plot of the ground, which Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver, and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died. They buried him in the hill, belonging to Phinehas' his son, which was given to him in the mountains of Ephraim. Really appreciate you tuning in to this reading today. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, have a blessed day.